Thanks for joining us today for an overview on the fourth way. Our aim is to provide you with valuable information to aid you on your journey of self-discovery. Our purpose in creating this resource is to simplify the intricate Gurdjieffian system into easily digestible pieces for you to absorb. So with that in mind, let's start at the beginning. What is the fourth way? The fourth way is a unique esoteric teaching that emerged in the early 20th century, primarily through the works of two influential thinkers, George Gurdjieff and Peter Uspensky. Gurdjieff was a mystic teacher who developed a unique system of self-transformation known as the fourth way. He believed that modern people were trapped in a state of sleep disconnected from their true selves and unaware of the deeper realities of existence. Through his teachings and practices, Gurdjieff aimed to awaken people from the state of sleep and help them reach a higher state of consciousness. Peter Uspensky was an accomplished mathematician, writer, and part of the European intelligentsia at the time. This history of their meeting is a very interesting tale, one that we will go over on a future video. Suffice it to say, the meeting of Uspensky and Gurdjieff was a fortuitous event in the realm of spirituality and mysticism. Uspensky was a prominent polymath, mathematician, author, Western spiritualist, and well-known intellectual who had a deep interest in esoteric knowledge, while Gurdjieff was an Eastern mystic who had explored many various spiritual paths and had developed his own approach to human consciousness and evolution. Their collaboration resulted in a fusion of Western and Eastern mysticism, which brought a fresh perspective and new insights to the spiritual journey. This pairing helped to bridge the gap between these two different worlds and provided a platform for the exploration of new ideas and practices. The combination of their skills and knowledge created a powerful synergy that allowed them to develop a unique approach to spiritual growth and self-discovery. Ospinsky's analytical mind and creative thinking skills complemented Gurdjieff's intuition and spiritual insights, resulting in a powerful combination that paved the way for the development of the fourth way. This approach emphasized the importance of awareness, willpower, and intention, and provided a practical path to spiritual awakening that was accessible to people from all walks of life. The fourth way is often referred to as the system of the human machine, as it emphasizes the importance of developing all aspects of oneself, physical, emotional, and intellectual, in order to achieve a higher state of consciousness. Gurdjieff, through the fourth way system, provides a map of the inner psyche, the different elements involved, and in how to move forward on the path to enlightenment, or at least self-improvement and inner peace. It is known as the way of the sly man, as it encourages the use of intelligence, adaptability, and practicality in spiritual pursuits, rather than relying solely on blind faith or asceticism. The fourth way is considered by its practitioners to be a practical and effective path to spiritual development that can be followed by anyone, regardless of their background or beliefs. The fourth way presents a unique perspective on human consciousness and personal development as it aims to facilitate spiritual growth through action and will. Unlike traditional Eastern mystic systems that prioritize stillness and awareness through meditation, while acceptance and self-awareness are significant components of the fourth way, the fourth way requires will and action with intentional effort and determination. You need a clear aim to achieve one's desired outcome, which is to become more conscious. Also, unlike other spiritual paths, the fourth way does not want require one to abandon their everyday life and go to a monastery or meditate for years in a cave or other remote location. Instead, it emphasizes the importance of integrating spiritual practices into daily life, allowing individuals to develop a higher level of consciousness while remaining engaged in the world. With the fourth way, the best place to start is right where you are, and how you are, so that you can learn to observe your unconscious self, which is the first step of the path. The ultimate purpose of the fourth way 
is to assist individuals in achieving a higher state of consciousness and self-awareness, which can lead to a more fulfilling and meaningful existence. To understand why it is called the fourth way, it is essential to mention the three other ways. First, the way of the fakir, or the way of the body. This path focuses on mastering physical hardships or enduring physical pain to achieve spiritual growth. It is often associated with asceticism and self-mortification practices found in various religious traditions. Number two, the way of the monk, or the way of the emotions. This path emphasizes devotion, faith, and emotional purification. Monks dedicate their lives to prayer, meditation, and contemplation, seeking to cultivate a deep connection with the divine. Number three, the way of the yogi, or the way of the mind. This path centers on intellectual development and mental discipline. Yogis strive to attain self-realization and enlightenment through meditation, concentration, and the study of sacred texts. According to Gurdjieff, most religions and spiritual paths fall into one of these three categories. The fourth way is unique because it integrates elements from all three paths, offering a more comprehensive and balanced approach to spiritual development. Gurdjieff called it the way of the sly man. Why did he call it the way of the sly man? Let's hear a quote from Gurdjieff. The fourth way is sometimes called the way of the sly man. The sly man knows some secret which the fakir, monk, and yogi do not know. How the sly man learned the secret, it is not known. Perhaps he found it in some old books. Perhaps he inherited it. Perhaps he bought it. Perhaps he stole it from someone. It makes no difference. The sly man knows the secret, and with his help outstrips the fakir, the monk, and the yogi. The fourth way is called the way of the sly man because it is the way of the man who cannot renounce anything cannot give up anything, and yet who wants to attain. Such a man, if he sets out to attain, must inevitably resort to slyness. If he does not resort to slyness, he can never attain. But he must be sly with himself, not with others. And he must attain this aim by working on himself, not by working on others. This is the fundamental principle of the fourth way. When a man attains will on the fourth way, he can make use of it because he has acquired control of all his bodily, emotional, and intellectual functions. And besides, he has saved a great deal of time by working on three sides of his being in parallel and simultaneously. In this passage, Gurdjieff is emphasizing the importance of using intelligence, cunning, and adaptability in order to achieve one's goals on the spiritual path. Gurdjieff often used the term sly man to describe an individual who is able to navigate the complexities of life and the spiritual path with intelligence, wit, and flexibility. He saw this quality as essential for anyone who wishes to make progress on the fourth way, which requires a high degree of self-awareness, self-discipline, and a willingness to confront one's own limitations and illusions. So why the way of the slide man? Because number one, it is most hard for most people to give up everything and become a monk yogi, fakir, just to find spiritual enlightenment or simply evolve your consciousness to higher levels. A sojourner on the fourth way does not have to leave everything behind. He can stay right where he is. In fact, Gurdjieff said that the situation you find yourself in is usually the best place to start, not in a faraway monastery or a cave meditating away from the noise of life. It is about finding inner peace and strength of will despite the internal conditions. Also, number two, people who follow one of the three paths tend to become spiritually unbalanced. They work on one center while leaving the others undeveloped. This does not lead to enlightenment, except in rare cases by accident. Gurdjieff said that these unbalanced ways tend to produce stupid saints and weak yogis. To understand what he meant by that, Stupid saints are able to do all, but do not know what to do, 
and weak yogis know what to do, but cannot do it. It's worth noting that the terms weak yogis and stupid saints are not intended to be insults, but rather descriptions of certain types of individuals based on their level of understanding and progress on the spiritual path. Gurdjieff believed that all individuals have the potential to develop spiritually, but that some may face greater challenges or require different methods and approaches to achieve their goals. Gurdjieff and Ospensky both emphasized that the fourth way is a path for those who have become disillusioned with traditional spiritual methods, or who have found that other paths do not fully address their needs. It is also a path that does not require faith in order to progress. According to Ospensky, there is no question of faith or belief in all of this. Quite the opposite. This system teaches people to believe in absolutely nothing. You must verify everything that you see, hear, and feel. Only in that way can you come to something. Now just to clarify, that doesn't mean that faith can't play a role in the system of spiritual development, but it is not required to make progress with self-observation. Ultimately, what Gurdjieff is giving us is a map of our inner psyche. As with a map, no faith is required. If someone hands you a map, for example, you can simply go to whatever spot is on the map and see for yourself if the landmark on the map is real or not. It is similar with Gurdjieff's fourth way, which is a map of the self and its harmonious development. Also like a map, if the terrain is rough and hard to navigate, you may need more than just a map. You may need a guide, someone who's traversed the path before you to make it easier. Gurdjieff offers us both the map and the guide. As someone who went on the journey himself, he has many tips for fellow travelers on the spiritual journey. The fourth way is especially useful to someone who's tried other maps but gave up in frustration due to the lack of quality guide or map to follow. Here's what Gurdjieff has said about this in his own words. The fourth way is for those who, having tried one of the traditional ways and found it unsatisfactory, or having tried to create a way of their own, have come to understand the necessity of the work. The fourth way is not a way of monasteries, nor of asceticism, nor of withdrawing from life. It is a way of living in the world, but not being of the world. It is a way of developing the ordinary functions of life, but at the same time seeing through them to the real purpose of existence. The fourth way is for those who have already understood and have already become convinced that to attain anything of real value in life requires work on oneself, and that it is useless to wait for anyone else to do anything for you. So what is the sly man's secret? It is a higher force, the will, combined with the higher emotional center, that produces an energy that is able to penetrate the being of man and create unity in his centers where there was none before. This energy must come from one's higher self, your true I, as Gurdjieff would call it, but it will not come by itself. It must come with effort and intention. Or in his words, conscious labors and intentional suffering. These labors and sufferings are not masochism, which is suffering for no good reason, but rather intentional suffering, which strives to overcome the slumber of daily life and to see oneself as one really is. Let's be clear. We all suffer in our day-to-day -day lives in many different ways. The difference is that most of us suffer unconsciously with no aim at all, or an aim that changes like the wind. Gurdjieff's system turns that unconscious suffering into intentional suffering, or self-aware suffering. Self-observation of the unconscious during suffering is the first step and can create change on its own. The next step is to intentionally poke and prod the ego through putting oneself into uncomfortable physical or social situations in order to observe our egoic reaction to produce change. We have to dig down deep into the layers of our subconscious in order to fully reprogram our machines and thus obtain true will, which is the ultimate superpower, by the way, the power to do, as Gurdjieff called it. Gurdjieff said that in order to do, you must first know 
But in order to know, we must discover how to know. Because we mostly spend our lives asleep, most of us only experience the illusion of doing. Instead, Gurdjieff says, most things happen to us, but our ego takes the credit, so we perceive that we have done something, when in reality it was merely an unconscious reaction, and our will had nothing to do with it. What Gurdjieff offers is the real power of free will, but it requires a good bit of self-observation to notice our unconscious reactions so that we can be free to do. By just adding in the aim of awakening and the exercise of self-observation, one can observe one's machine in action and create a small amount of presence or awareness, one step at a time. Why is it important to have an aim? One reason is that our inner self contains many impulses and thoughts that all struggle for control. All of them call themselves I. So an aim is an act of will, something higher in oneself that can unite all of these I's into a cohesive whole. So why the will to awaken? If you found yourself unjustly imprisoned, then your aim would be to get out, would it not? Here we find ourselves in the prison of ourselves. So the only aim that can help us is the aim of getting out. The problem is, for most people, we don't see ourselves as a prisoner so we never even attempt to escape. So having an aim of waking up is extremely important on the fourth way. Ospinsky says that without an aim, our efforts and activities are aimless, uncoordinated, and will yield us little to no results. In fact, without an aim, our activities may even be harmful, as they may scatter our forces and make us lose sight of what is important. With an aim, on the other hand, we can harness our energies and direct them towards achieving our objective. In conclusion, the fourth way offers a unique and comprehensive approach to spiritual growth and self-discovery, integrating elements from the way of the fakir, the way of the monk, and the way of the yogi. Through the efforts of Gurdjieff and Ospinsky, this esoteric teaching has become more widely known providing a path for individuals to evolve their consciousness and live more fulfilling lives. For beginners interested in exploring the fourth way, it is essential to recognize its rich history and the profound impact it can have on personal development and spiritual transformation. Gurdjieff and Ospensky were instrumental in introducing the fourth way to the Western world. Initially, Gurdjieff shared his esoteric knowledge with only a select few, who he believed were capable of understanding and applying these teachings. Toward the end of his life, Gurdjieff recognized the importance of making his ideas accessible to a broader audience. He began sharing his teachings more openly, ensuring that others could continue his work and spread the message of the Fourth Way. As a result, the Fourth Way has since become an influential spiritual movement, attracting individuals seeking a more profound understanding of themselves and the world around them. Gurdjieff once said that the fourth way is never a permanent way. It has no definite form, and there are no institutions connected with it. It appears and disappears governed by some particular laws of its own. So here on this channel, the door to the fourth way appears again. It is my wish to bring his complex ideas to the spiritual community in a simple, easy to understand format. Gurdjieff created many exercises geared towards helping develop one's inner centers harmoniously. We will be making more videos to explain the fourth way ideas in more detail, as well as spiritual exercises that can help people evolve through the inner work on the fourth way path. We hope you've enjoyed this overview. Please don't forget to like and subscribe for more content like this.